Paul, what's the feeling after that? Uh, oh, mixed, yeah. Uh, oh, look, it's a fantastic effort to the players after the game. You're playing against a team that's obviously trying to win premierships. Um, yeah, and the here and the now, you're playing on a ground that we've never played at before in conditions that we're probably not used to playing in. And you start seven zip down, um, so it's not a great first 15 minutes. So to come back and to compete really, really well was a terrific effort. Uh, the frustration stems from yeah you know, losing the game clearly. Um, so, but overall, we're yeah you know, where we're heading. I think we saw today. You know, the showcase of the, the talent that we've got. The, and they're still young. You know, Maxi Gorn, you know, 40 games or something like that against Goldstein was an unbelievable contest. Um, and you can go through each player. So, yeah, look, there's a lot more positives than negatives, but you would love, you would love Billy to mark that ball and go back and kick the goal. It would have been nice. It's a positive, um, especially how you played last week against Essendon. You're bouncing back, showing a, a lot more fight. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, look, I think, um, look, we're all about improvement. You know, from round one to round two, we did improve. You know, so from round two to round three, we improved significantly against, as I said, a high high quality opposition that's played prelim finals the last you know, last two years. So, um, yeah, look, overall, it's, it's a pleasing day, but, you know, you, you don't win and that's where the frustration comes in. You referenced the first quarter scoreline just then. You look pretty calm on the broadcast, you must admit. How did you address... That with the players at you know, it's funny because we, we sensed in the box we didn't seem to be playing that badly. The, the goals came from, I don't want to say unusual positions, but you know we could have kicked it, a um, couple of free kicks, a um, few high balls that went in marked. So I don't know. Was, and we didn't really have an idea, I guess, until we had the wind in the second, how big a factor it was. Um, but yeah, kicking two late goals, I felt some of the, our game was actually in pretty good shape, and that's I guess that's the hard thing to do when you're coaching, um, because the scoreboard can often dictate your mood and, and how you see the game. So we were actually comfortable, you know, as comfortable as you can be, six goals down or seven to nil um, at quarter time. Does that mean there there wasn't necessarily a rev up at quarter time? No, not at all. No, no. Um, look, I think what I've learned for this for this team, I mean, we've got to be really educational and solution based. As I said, we're still a very, very young team, so there's no good. You know, I think you can rev up older teams, and yeah, you know, they can just tend to flick a switch a bit. But but our young guys want want solutions. They want to know, you know, why are we up? Why are we down? Why are we playing well? Why are we playing poorly? So that's something the coaching group have really made a a big focus of during the week and, and on match day. So, yeah, we just tried to find a few solutions at quarter time and we were able to get back in the game. Is it important not to bank on having the win? You really got in top in the middle of the ground and sort of rode that momentum there? Yeah, it was. I mean, I think the, you know, around the centre bounce was so important today. It's like it's a territory game a bit. Um, so when we were able to control the centre bounces against the win, we were actually competitive and they were probably the same. You know, they... Yeah, so centre bounces were critical. Um, contest area was really critical. Yeah, because you can't just rely on the wind, you know, kicking goals. I think we kicked nine in the second quarter and they kicked eights and sixes and sevens or whatever. Um, so both teams probably worked it out a bit better after half time. Um, and I think it dropped a, a fair bit in the last quarter. But yeah, you, you know, you just don't want to rely on the wind to, to, to help you kick scores. Drew back level in that last quarter. Did anything shift from that point that got them back in the game? I mean, a little, probably a little bit of inexperience. Um, yeah, they, they were really composed and kicked some couple of nice goals and yeah, probably just our composure with the ball, decision-making at times. I mean, Watsy's kick was probably on to Hogan, but, yeah, I think it was Cunnington put his arm up and grabbed the ball, should Watsy have gone back and had a shot. But that's, you know... I mean, when you're dissecting a game at the end and it's only five points of difference, every little thing matters. But overall, you know, I thought we were... Yeah, you know, really good for most of the game. How do you think um, Jesse Hogan went today after all the, I guess, the media coverage about his last, yeah, his last game? Yeah, look, it was a difficult game um, at times for forwards, particularly going against the wind. Yeah, you know, into the with the breeze was a little bit easier, but yeah, I think he ended up with you know, 20 possessions and kicked three goals and um, really impacted the game. So yeah, it was a much better performance, which was which was good. Can you talk us through that last time? It was 22 seconds when, uh, when that ball bounced, or I'm not sure if it was thrown up. Um, when they pushed forward then, what were you thinking? Yeah, I was thinking that 
yeah, look, I mean, look, to their to play our players' credit, they played it out the way we practised it, something we haven't been great at, you know, when we've been up or down before. So we practice like every team does. So we actually got what we wanted, you know. Um, I said to Kenty after the game, it would have been nice if he had given us another five or six seconds to, you know, with his kick for goal, but it was a great goal. I mean, Vanders would have been nice for Vanders to kick his as well. But again, those things happen in, in such a close game. But they executed really well in the last 20 seconds. And nearly, you know, if the kick had been maybe a little bit lower, um, you know, it's a good effort to get there and spoil. Um, the result might have been different, but it wasn't. How heartening is that, as you say, that they did know what to do and that they executed it? We've seen some high-pressure games in recent weeks where, you know, some players have admitted that in the frenetic pace of it, they just didn't know what to do. Um, you know, obviously with such a young side, it must be a real positive. Yeah, look, and as I said, we're really trying to be an educational-based coaching group and trying to give them solutions. You know, in the heat of the battle, sometimes it's hard because it's, you know, it's a long game and it's tiring and, and you're playing against a pretty mature side. So to be able to do that today is a real step forward. You know, we're going to make sure that we come and improve next week and the week after. Um, but it is a long season for young players, long game. But, yeah, to do that today and to action it really, really well and to nearly, you know, get a mark sort of 15 metres out directly in front, um, yeah, it was a, it was a good effort, but it wasn't to be. Before the start of the season, there was a lot of talk about how the interchange rules would affect the game. We've seen very high scoring, very fast tempo games so far this season. Do you think it's here to stay? Oh, I don't think they're up, up the interchange. Look, I mean, I think early in the season we always see open games. Probably the test is always middle of the year when it gets a bit wet and cold, and that's when the, I guess, the hysteria tends to jump out and everyone talks about the games. Um, early in the season, I think most seasons players get pretty tired early, so the games tend to open up. I mean, what happened? I think 90 is not bad. You know, I think it, it, uh, it's probably the level that it should stay. Hopefully, it stays at that level. Max had 50 odd yards and 25 to advantage. How did you assess the battle between those two today? Yeah, well, it was, I think, midfield coach said he hadn't seen a ruck duel like that probably for many, many years. You know, two ruckmen having such a significant impact on the game um, for both their teams. Um, so, uh, obviously, we'll, you know, we'll look at why Todd kicked five and, you know, how where Max can keep improving. But we look, he's, he's, as I said, he's young. He's had it, he fought back really well, I think. Goldstein kicked three in the first quarter, um, got a free kick in the th uh, third or something like that. Um, so it was a great effort from both of them. They both had significant impact on the game. Clayton and Oliver really um, yeah, won a lot of ball, um, kind of justifying their club's kind of... Some people thought it might be a risky draft pick so early on in his career. Yeah, look, he's still young. He's only in his third game. We thought last week he looked really tired and we spoke about whether we would or wouldn't play him today and he trained really well on Friday so that was probably the, the reason we, we played him but we'll keep on trying to manage those guys we've got a lot of younger guys that need to, to probably go in and out but it was a great response today, he had a down week last week and really responded so that's probably the most pleasing thing when a young player um, you know, has a bad game is able to come back and play so well um, so it was a terrific effort Thanks, guys. Everyone well before you take off? Everyone I think so, up. yeah. Um, I don't think any injuries yet. Thanks.